Every single year, there are players that break out in Major League Baseball. So I thought it'd be a good idea to predict who that breakout player is going to be for every single team in the 2024 season. And if you want to drop your picks for someone that you think is going to break out this season, leave them in the comment section below. As well as don't forget to like and subscribe on today's video so that you can help support the channel and so you don't miss out on the content coming at you in the future. So let's get going into these players who I think are going to break out this year. First up in today's video, we've got the Miami Marlins and their breakout player is Brian De La Cruz. I will never give up on Brian De La Cruz. He still hits the ball hard. He has a good sweet spot percentage. Like if he just puts the ball in the air a little bit more, a little more consistently, he could do big things. Now, granted, I am asking a lot of Brian De La Cruz. He hasn't really ever done this consistently, but we did see career highs across the board last season for him. There's a world where he figures it out. He's still only 27 years old. He's going to get a lot of bats in that lineup. I'm going to give Brian De La Cruz one more year for the breakout hype. For the St. Louis Cardinals, this pick's easy for me. It's Jordan Walker. What Walker was able to do in his rookie season last year was super encouraging as a 20 slash 21 year old. 16 homers, two 76 average with a 342 on base, 445 slugging, and a 787 OPS. Obviously, exit velo king hits the ball hard. Did have some whiff issues, did have a little bit of chase problems, but again, that's a rookie. He was 20 years old last year. In that Cardinals lineup where he's not expected to do a lot of the heavy lifting, I think Jordan Walker could absolutely thrive this upcoming season. Has all the makings of someone who could one day lead the league in home runs. Woo! Next up, we've got Brian Wu of the Seattle Mariners. Wu looked really good last year in 87 innings with the Mariners, a 4.21 ERA. ERA, a K rate at 25%, a walk rate under 10 at 8.4. The ERA, like I said, was 4.21, but the expected ERA was much lower at 3.48. He has a four pitch mix that's really solid. He's a pitcher whose fastball is really good, comes from a low approach angle, makes it look like it's rising even more, and it causes hitters to whiff 30% of the time on his fastball, along with a really good slider and a solid cutter. So for me, Wu and that Mariners rotation could be a guy that puts them to the next level, especially if he does have a breakout season. Breakout player for the Chicago Cubs, it's got to be Christopher Morel. Exit Velo King, bat flip God, and he's finally going to get consistent playing time with the Cubs this year. In the field, has a cannon of an arm. At the plate, swings a lethal bat. 91st percentile in average exit velo, 95th percentile in barrel rate last year, 92nd percentile in hard hit rate, 26 homers last year with a 247 average, 313 on base, 508 slugging, 821 OPS. I really do think Christopher Morel can easily be a 30 plus home run guy this upcoming season and cement himself as one of the most exciting fun players in the league this year, getting consistent playing time in Chicago. Keeping it in the central this time on the American League side for the Kansas City Royals, it's going to be Cole Reagans. Once Reagans got to Kansas City, he was disgusting last year. In 12 starts, with the Royals, a 2.64 ERA in 71 and two-thirds innings with a whip at 1.074, a FIP at 2.49, and he was striking out 31% of the batters he faced, walking under 10% at 9.4. So this guy's got the stuff to be a frontline starter for the Royals, especially if he continues on how he ended the season last year, and the stat cast numbers love him as well. That fastball up to 97 miles an hour with a really good changeup, a slider that had a 40% whiff rate in a smaller sample. There's a lot of good stuff here for Cole Reagans. Can make him one of the better pitchers on the Royals and one of the better pitchers in the American League. For the New York Yankees, I've got a weird pick. I'm going with Ian Hamilton. Ian Hamilton, low-key, last year was awesome for the Yankees in 58 innings, and I think he has the chance to really cement himself as one of the better relievers in baseball this upcoming season. With Hamilton, another guy who throws pretty hard, mid to upper 90s, and that slider is disgusting. He had a 42% whiff rate on his slider last year, which is his main pitch, and even his four-seam fastball, 30% whiff rate. Those two pitches coming out of the bullpen in the shorter samples that he's going to be out there for can make make him an extremely valuable asset for the Yankees in that bullpen. Like whiff rate, 94th percentile. They don't hit the ball hard against them. When you do, you hit it on the ground. He could fix up the walks a little bit, but Ian Hamilton, I think, has the chance to be one of the better relievers in baseball this upcoming season. Speaking of relievers, the Colorado Rockies breakout, Justin Lawrence. I'm obsessed with Justin Lawrence. I think once he leaves Coors, he'll be even better. But the fact that he's like basically a sidearm submarine kind of guy who throws to the mid upper 90s with a really, really fun slider gives me hope that he can be great. Now, of course, that fastball's got some sinking action, kind of need to when you pitch in Colorado. And that sweet sweeper, while sweepers don't normally get a lot of whiffs, he had a 36% whiff rate on that sweeper last year, along with just nobody hit it a 149 batting average on that pitch. So if he's able to throw that sweeper as effectively as he has and really get that sinker in on those right-handed batters, Justin Lawrence could be a really valuable reliever, someone that I would expect the Rockies to eventually trade at some point because once he leaves Colorado, like I said, that's where you're going to really see Justin Lawrence shine. Just crazy stuff from a crazy arm angle. He's a lot of fun. Nobody barrels the ball up against him. Next up, we've got my favorite team, the New York Mets, and their breakout player. It's got to be Francisco Alvarez. Great rookie season. He ended the year a little bit weak, cooled off, but still as a 20 
21-year-old last year catching every single day. 25 homers, a 721 OPS. Where he can improve, though, he hit 209, had an on-base under 300. Those are all places where I think Francisco Alvarez can continue to improve on. He worked really hard this offseason. He's obviously got crazy power, 84th percentile in terms of barrel rate. And defensively, he completely outperformed expectations. There's a lot to like here with Francisco. El Troll's going to have a big year. If the Mets want to do anything, they're going to need this bat to wake up even more than it did last season. And he's only 22. I think a huge year could be coming for Francisco. Breakout player for the Los Angeles Dodgers, I'm going to go with Bobby Miller. Last year, we saw him have a really good rookie campaign. 22 starts, 124 innings with a 3.76 ERA and a whip at 1.1. I had him in my top 30 pitchers for this upcoming season, and I think he's going to just get even better. A fastball that literally sits at 99 miles an hour is disgusting from a starter. He had a 36% whiff rate on his curveball last year. His slider was 30%. His changeup was getting effective misses. And again, that fastball is lethal. It's disgusting. It's so fast. Didn't walk anybody, barely gave up any barrels. There's nothing not to like about Bobby Miller going into his 24, 25 year old season for a Dodgers team that's absolutely loaded. So for me, Bobby Miller is the easy choice. Funnily enough, the other young pitcher that made my top 30, Grayson Rodriguez, is going to be my breakout pick for the Baltimore Orioles. Orioles were a tough team to pick someone for, but Grayson Rodriguez, he sticks out like a sore thumb. Grayson is just really good. Don't let the 4 3 ERA last year in 122 innings make you think that he's not going to be a great pitcher. Second half, really stepped it up and still had a 25% K rate with an 8.2% walk rate on the year. The slider was really good at the major league level, a whiff rate of 34.1%. And while the fastball may not be elite as we once thought, still in the upper 90s, 97 average on that fastball is elite level stuff. With that great extension in that big ballpark, competitive team, I think this could be Grayson Rodriguez's breakout season for sure. Keeping it in the AL East, we've got the Boston Red Sox up next, and I got another young pitcher for them. That's going to be Brian Bayo. Brian Bayo has been working hard this offseason, and I've loved the improvements that we've seen. While his fastball definitely needs some work, it is a very hittable pitch, not the best by any means, especially because he likes to throw a sinker a lot, and it's just, again, kind of mid. But that changeup and that slider, I think, are going to be what separates him this upcoming season, because that changeup is one of the better changeups in the league. Absolutely disgusting. And it's not like he gets hit particularly hard. He's 92nd percentile in ground ball rate. So just a few tweaks here and there for Brian Bayo. You could see that ERA go from 4-2 easily into the mid threes. And he had 157 innings under his belt last year. So he's going to be strong and ready for the season. Similarly, if the Red Sox want any chance of being actually good this year, Brian Bayo is going to have to be one of their frontline starters for sure. Really hard to pick a player for the Phillies. Got a lot of established players. I ended up going Christopher Sanchez. Christopher Sanchez low key does a lot of things really well that make you a solid pitcher. Like he had a 90 97th percentile chase rate last year at 34.8%. 98th percentile in walk rate at 4%. That's gross on a walk rate. 4% with a 95th percentile ground ball rate. Great extension. So it makes that 92 mile per hour fastball perceived as a little bit faster because he's so close. Playing in Philly, getting those ground balls is going to be huge because that ballpark is a band box. And he had like a 24% K rate. There's nothing that tells me that Christopher Sanchez is going to be like a Cy Young caliber pitcher. But I think another strong year of like a 3-5 ERA from Christopher Sanchez completely changes how this Philly's team feels and looks during the 2024 season, which is basically what he did last year, but another 120, 130 innings under his belt, that could be huge. I swear they're not all pitchers, but next up we have a pitcher. That's going to be Kyle Harrison of the San Francisco Giants. Giants were another team that was tough to pick a breakout for, and Harrison was kind of the one that screamed the most obvious to me. Top pitching prospect in all of baseball. He came up last year in 34 innings, had a 4.15 ERA. We saw some encouraging things out of Kyle Harrison. The issue with him is always going to be the walk rate, and at the major league level, kept it at 7.5%. That's completely doable. The issue was, wasn't getting a ton of swings and misses, but based on what we saw in the minors from Kyle Harrison based on the fact that he's only 22 years old 22 23 and the hype that was around him I think that this could be a breakout candidate for sure for the Giants he has some nasty nasty stuff like that slurve or whatever he calls it that thing's filthy maybe a few less fastballs that could be the key let's head to the National League Central here Milwaukee Brewers breakout Abner Uribe he was sick in his rookie year 30 innings 1.76 ERA disgusting and honestly this is just an excuse for me to talk about Abner Uribe because I love him so much this guy's going to be one of the best relievers in baseball no doubt out this upcoming season. He throws 100 with some sink. That slider is just devastating. He had a 58% whiff rate on the slider last year. You know how many hits he gave up last year? Two. Two hits on the slider in 167 pitches. That sinker doesn't get hit. Like, nothing gets hit at all for Abner Uribe. Just cut down on the walks a little bit. And even still, one of the best relievers in baseball right now. You're just going to know him. He's going to be more of a household name. It's going to be the guy that's going to push Devin Williams out of Milwaukee because he's that good. All right, let's break up this slog of pitchers here. Let's go with a hitter now. For the Texas Rangers, Josh Young. I don't feel great about this pick because he was pretty good last year. You could make an argument that was his breakout, but I think he has even more 
left in the tank. Like 23 homers, I think Josh Young could be a 30 home run guy. He was chasing and whiffing and striking out a lot and not walking a lot last year, but I don't think that's necessarily the kind of player he is. I think we're going to see improvements on those fronts, along with the fact that he played a good third base defensively. OAA loved him. He hits the ball hard, seems to be able to barrel up the ball, which tells me that the pitch selection and hand-eye coordination are pretty good. We could see a 30 home run season out of Josh Young. Again, it's tough with the Rangers, a lot of established players, so I had to pick one that I felt was the most likely to break out, and to me, that was my guy Josh Young, who I've been a big fan of ever since he was at Texas Tech. Staying in the American League West, Going back to the pitching side for the Oakland A's, I'm going with Mason Miller. Mason Miller, we saw a small sample of him last year. 33 and a third innings. He was great between starting and relieving. 3.78 ERA, a whip at 1.2. Another guy who just throws absolute shed. 98 miles an hour, average fastball velocity. Striking out a ton of batters. Nobody was barreling up the ball against him. A 3.7% barrel rate is amazing. And it looks like he's going to be used as the closer this year, which, I mean, if you just throw 98 as a starter, it's going to be touching 100 as a reliever. And that slider was filthy for 47% whiff rate last year. Similarly to Abner Uribe, only give up four hits on it in 145 pitches. There's a lot to like about Mason Miller, one of the few bright spots in Oakland this year. Guy just throws ched. For the Arizona Diamondbacks, I also picked the pitcher again. I'm sorry, guys, but this was the most obvious choice for me. That's going to be Brandon Fott. Fott did not have great numbers during the regular season. He looked bad, but in the postseason, he was great. He had some gutsy performances for the Diamondbacks. They don't make it to the World Series without him, and he still does the things that make it encouraging that he could take a step forward, especially with a another year of Brent Strom with him. We saw what he's done for Zach Gallon's career. Hopefully he can do the same for Fott. Like Fott last year didn't walk anybody. A 6.2% walk rate. That's fantastic. The slider, the sweeper, they're still really good pitches with whiff rates above 30%. Even that curveball they started to show off at one point was good at 29.4% whiff rate. The fastball is the thing that kind of scares me the most. His fastball is devastatingly average, but if those breaking pitches can help lead that fastball to look a little more deceptive, a little faster than what you expect, that's where Fott can really shine. Secondary first, worry about the fastball, maybe to get ahead in the count or to sneak a strike away. That's where I think he can really be effective. Breakout player for the Minnesota Twins, not going Royce Lewis. He's already a stud. I'm going to go with Ryan Jeffers. This year, he's finally going to be the everyday catcher. And while defensively, the numbers fell off a cliff last season at the plate, he still does so many fun things. Like, yeah, he's going to strike out a ton, but he gets on base, a 9.9% walk rate last year, and he's a barrel god, barrel king. Love it. Like elite levels in terms of hitting the ball hard in the air. And at the catcher position, that's kind of all you can really ask for. Plus, Ryan Jeffers is only 26 going into his 27-year-old season, and we've seen him put up crazy power potential already. I love the idea of him playing every single day in Minnesota. I think the defense will come back as well. So I'm going to keep an eye out for in fantasy baseball if he really starts playing consistently like we expect. Back in the AL Central, the Detroit Tigers breakout player, it's clearly going to be Riley Green. Oh my goodness, I am obsessed with how good Riley Green could be. I was incredibly encouraged with what we saw from Riley Green last year. A lot of good signs here. It's going to be tough because, of course, in Detroit, hard to put up power numbers as a lefty, but an 11% barrel rate, really good. Hits the ball hard. Average exit velo 91.6 miles an hour. Hard hit rate, high. He could cut down the whiffs a little bit. He could cut down the strikeouts a little bit and maybe walk more. Like, that's where you see a 22-year-old player and you could see some growth this upcoming season is a little more patience, a little more selectivity, but he's a good athlete. That Tigers team is going to be competitive and fun this year. Put him in the middle of the order. He could be a huge reason why the Tigers maybe make a playoff push in that AL Central. Really good hitter. Hopefully he stays healthy because if he can, he can be special. For the Los Angeles Angels, their breakout player I'm going to pick is going to be Logan Ohapi. Ohapi played a small sample last year, only 200 plate appearances, but 14 homers, a 236 average with a 296 on base, 500 slugging, and 796 OPS was pretty encouraging. Now defensively, looked about as bad as you could have asked for, but you're the Angels. You want to see this guy swing the bat, and his barrel rate was elite. 15.6% of the time, he was hitting the ball hard and in the air, which is what a barrel is. Hard hit rate was was great. The average exit velos are strong. He doesn't really strike out that much. I love everything from Logan Ohapi. He's got a really nice swing. Should be playing every single day, of course, in Los Angeles for the Angels. I guess it's Anaheim. I don't know why I said that. I didn't love that. The Angels are from Anaheim, let's be honest. But Ohapi has all the tools to be a really good plus offensive catcher. My God, another American League West team up. We've got the Astros. Breakout player for them. You guessed it. it's going to be a pitcher, Hunter Brown. This team's tough to pick someone for. Again, a lot of established veterans, a lot of established stars. Hunter Brown, not one of them, though. Expect to hear big things though this upcoming season. Even though he had a 5 ERA last year for the Astros, they still ran him out there for 155 innings. He had a whip at 1.36. Again, 
great ground ball rate, 52.2% with a 26.8% K rate. That's a really good recipe to be a successful pitcher at the majors. It's weird though, because he still got barreled up a ton, even though he gave up a lot of ground balls and struck out a bunch of guys. So something to me isn't clicking. I don't know what it is, but when you watch him pitch, you can totally see that this can be a really, really good pitcher. The curveball solid. The splitter could probably use a little bit of more fine tuning, but in the small sample he used it, it was unhittable. It was really just that the fastball and slider were not that great, but I trust the Astros pitching lab. I trust a guy like Hunter Brown. I trust the pitching guys on the Twitter world who are like, Hunter Brown's good. Definitely could have a breakout season this year. For the Atlanta Braves, the breakout picks Jared Kelnick. Ugh. Yeah, he's, he's gonna do it. It's gonna be him. He's gonna break out. I know it. He's in Atlanta. Got that short porch in right field. He does a lot of things well. I mean, he still chases and whiffs like crazy, but he hits the ball hard. He's gonna be dead pull. He's gonna be playing pretty much every single day, probably not facing the tough lefties. And he still gets on base. And he's a former top prospect, number six overall pick by the Mets. If he got traded to another team, wouldn't be my pick. But because he was traded to the Braves and they've got that voodoo magic down in Atlanta and because the Mets traded him, I just know he's gonna haunt me for years and years and years. That left him his swing is just too sweet to not be good. So yeah, Jared Kalnick, easy pick. Stud, you know the drill. Fun one here for the Tampa Bay Rays. Their breakout player, Jose Caballero. So Caballero's batting profile graded very similar to Isak Paredes when he got traded to the Rays. Now, he doesn't hit the ball as hard, but Jose Caballero is kind of a dead pull hitter. And that's something that the Rays have been kind of targeting in terms of these fringish players is you pull the ball because once you can pull the ball, you can hit the ball a little bit harder. You might be able to see Jose Caballero break out for like 15 to 20 home runs this year because he's a good defensive shortstop. That's kind of why they got him with some offensive upside. Doesn't swing and miss, gets on base, hasn't hit the ball hard yet, but I'm telling you, the Rays are cooking up something with Caballero. He could be a dangerous player. I'm not saying like one of the best shortstops in the league, but maybe a guy who hits 15-ish home runs, plays good defense, great base runner. I think you'd be surprised by that, right? For the San Diego Padres, their breakout pick for me is going to be Luis Campusano. Campusano ended the season so hot for the Padres and his slash line looked great. 174 plate appearances, 319 average, 356 on base, 491 slugging, 847 OPS. The position is finally his. Doesn't swing and miss. He hits the ball hard. Defensively, he's whatever. Not the greatest athlete either. I know he's got that new stance and it is concerning how insane that looks. I don't know who taught him that, but as long as he hits like he did to end the season last year, Campusano could become a top 10 catcher in the league by the end of this upcoming season. This next pick feels weird, but Ellie De La Cruz could be the breakout player for the Reds. I know he's got the hype, so it doesn't feel right, but relatively speaking, his year last season wasn't that great. Now, defensively at shortstop, he was awesome, and he has a cannon of an arm, and he's a freak athlete, and he hits the ball hard. All things that are good, but the counting numbers in the slash line again was bad, which leads me to believe that he could definitely be a breakout candidate, because the numbers weren't as good as the hype. Like 13 homers and 400 plate appearances with a 235 average, 300 on base, 410 slugging, and 710 OPS. You tell me he can't break out with those numbers based on what they were last year, and he hits the ball hard, and he's a freak? Give me Eli De La Cruz all year playing in that band box. 30 home runs incoming. For the South Side team in Chicago, the White Sox, their breakout player, Andrew Vaughn. This is the last year of Andrew Vaughn breakout talk. I won't do it anymore. No one else should do it again if he doesn't actually put it together this year. He's still a guy who just barrels the ball well enough with a good eye at the plate, good discipline, hits the ball hard enough where maybe those 21 home runs turn into 25, maybe 30 home runs. It's not going to be easy. Again, the White Sox don't have a lot of great options because his team's pretty dog water, but Vaughn was the one that jumped out the most to me as a possible breakout candidate, even though I don't feel great about it, so I don't want to talk too much more about it. Breaking out for the Washington Nationals, I'm going to go with Mackenzie Gore. Mackenzie Gore, former top prospect, has that prospect pedigree going into his 25, 26-year-old season. Last year, 136 innings, a 4-4-2 ERA with a whip at 1.4. The problem with him is that he got barreled up like crazy and he didn't really have the greatest control. A walk rate at 9.8% was a little bit high, but he's got great extension. He still has good stuff. I'm not giving up on the stuff with Mackenzie Gore. Like curveball, 37% whiff rate. Slider, 37% whiff rate. It was just the fastball was getting absolutely torched. Throw that less. Use the breaking balls more. You have a recipe for success here with Mackenzie Gore. Did that just rhyme? More and Gore? Whatever it is, keep an eye out for him. He's way too talented to be as bad as he was last year, and he's still so young. Just keep him away from Patrick Corbin, please. For the Cleveland Guardians, their breakout player, I'm going to go with Gavin Williams. We got a very small sample of him last year in 82 innings, a 3.29 ERA. 
1.26 whip, and I think you could see it again. I think he's just one of those guys. He throws a heavy fastball, if that makes sense. Like, it's just, it feels faster than 96, and that's probably because his extension is one of the best in all of baseball. Nobody was barreling up the ball against him last year, 85th percent barrel rate. I think we're going to see more strikeouts out of him. His stuff is really good, and I think we'll also see an improvement on the walk rate, which is around 10%. But that fastball playing off that slider curveball combination, Gavin Williams could be a frontline starter this season. I would not be surprised if he even surpasses Tanner Bybee in that rotation as the best pitcher. Blue Jays, I don't know who to pick, so I'm picking Nate Pearson because put him in the bullpen, let him be a reliever, let him throw 102 with that power slider. That's probably where he has the chance to have the most success because he's been terrible at the major league level. Like last year, he was okay, 4.85 ERA in 42 innings as a reliever, but just let him pump, let him gas it up because he throws 99. He's got great extension. That's my pick for the Blue Jays. I don't have much else to say. At some point, Nate Pearson is going to put it together. 27 years old, similar to Vaughn and some of the other guys. This is the last year for the Nate Pearson breakout. And then last but certainly not least, we've got the Pittsburgh Pirates, and I am doubling down on Key Brian Hayes. He kind of did a little bit last year, like put together the best season of his career by far. 15 homers, 10 stolen bases, 271 average, 309 on base, 453 slugging for a 762 OPS. We know defensively, disgusting at third base. And at the plate, he still hits the ball incredibly hard. 93rd percentile in terms of average exit velo. And Max Exavilo 113 is up there with some of the best. Just put the ball in the air a little bit, Key Brian Hayes, and you legitimately could hit 30 home runs like it was nothing. So that, with the great glove, Key Brian Hayes could be a hugely important player for the Pirates this season. If they want any chance, it's going to be on the back of Key Brian. So there they are, my breakout player for every single team in Major League Baseball for the 2024 season. I'd love to know who you think is going to break out from your favorite team down in the comment section below. Drop a like on the video if you do enjoy this as well. Subscribe so you don't miss out on the content coming at you. Follow me on all my social media. A giraffe neck mark links are in the description and that's where i'll wrap up today's video you guys know the drill from here on out youtube recommends you watch this video this is my most recent upload so click through those if you have not yet seen them thank you guys for watching and i'll see you all in another video bye